through pain, a lot of times we find that love. We find that place to be seen. We find that place to show up. Like there is so much purpose in pain that we don't even realize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we forget to look around us and see that there are other people having something going on. Right. And if we just keep showing up, showing up for ourselves and showing up for everyone else, then we can easily find that purpose in pain because that purpose is love. Hey, Soul Warriors. Welcome to our podcast. This is Wolf and Tara, the founders of Soul Intentions. We are your seasoned guides to change making and out of the box thinking. Do you find yourself doing all the right things, but nothing seems to be shifting? It feels like there's an invisible wall that you just can't seem to scale. This is when you get to choose, evolve or repeat. When we keep the promises we make to ourselves, cool shit happens. It's just that simple. One small shift, one small action equals a great life. Mundane living is not an option. You have all the tools. All you have to do is apply them. If you want to tap into your inner soul warrior and not be held back by any excuses or old behaviors, you can count on us to call it as we see it. From gentle nudges to a kick in the ass, if needed, all wrapped up with fierce love. As we embark on this journey together, we will be deep diving into the art of clear communication, mindset, authenticity, and self-awareness so that you can shine without the struggle. Having spent years in service to others, we witness firsthand how hard it is for people to embrace their soul's intentions. Bringing ease to growth is knowing you are powerful, capable, and whole right now. That is the magic we bring to our judgment-free online community. Now let's dive into the podcast and tap into our soul intentions. Hey, Soul Warriors, welcome to Episode 4, Turning Pain to Purpose of Soul Intentions, Evolve or Repeat, Your Choice. Today we're going to dive deep into the topic that no one really likes to talk about, address, or deal with, and that is pain, (laughs) and how we can turn pain into purpose instead Mm -hmm. of just pure pain. (laughs) Yeah. I was inspired to talk about this because I follow a new father actually online and he was talking about the other day that everyone had told him that he was going to feel completely powerless and completely useless when his partner went into labor. It was their first child. Hmm. And I thought it was funny, first of all, that everyone's advice was, you're going to feel this way, you're going to feel this way, you're going to feel this way, and telling him he was going to basically feel pain and feel horrible and feel useless and awful. And I'm like, yeah, that's a great way to support new people and not give them any sort of like, this is what you can do and this is how to get through it and this is the purpose of it all. So he was told all of this, but he happens to be an MMA fighter. So he has great training on mindset and breathing and all sorts of other things. Yeah, because you're totally obsessed with MMA fighters right now. (laughs) I am. That's my guilty pleasure. I'm spiritual (laughs) and I like fighting. So yeah, we all have something. That's that's my thing. (laughs) So anyway, this fighter, he was in the delivery room with his partner and it was not going well. And they were hitting all sorts of problems and she was in immense pain and... Nothing was working well for them. So he had a moment where he heard what everybody else had told him in his head. Mm -hmm. And he's like, nah, that's not going to be me. And he recentered himself on what he knows, on mindset and breathing. And he got in front of his partner and he said, this is what we're going to do right now. We're going to turn pain into purpose. And she's like, what the hell does that mean? And he said, all right, we're going to breathe because we know how to breathe. And we know we can get through any pain because she she fights too. We can Mm -hmm. get through any pain by focusing on our breath and being super present. And the purpose is the beautiful daughter that we are birthing into this world. Mm -hmm. And any sort of pain is worth that type of love and that type of reward. So he just got right in front of her. They breathed together. They stayed present. They talked about all the awesome things they were going to do with their daughter. They anchored into what that reward was at the end what that gold, what that purpose was at the end. And that's how they got through the pain together. Wow, that's pretty cool. But you know, one thing, as I'm listening to you tell the story, that it all really comes down to mindset. Completely, every time. Every time it comes down to mindset. I mean, a couple of years ago, I don't remember if I read it or if actually somebody said this to me, but they said that you learn so much in 10 minutes of pain than you do in 10 years of happiness. And it's been interesting because I always keep that in mind. And I wonder if we can actually get to the point in our life where we can learn equally when we're happy and when we're in pain. And I think it's achievable. I think it's achievable with the right mindset. And if you say in the present moment, Mm -hmm. part of the mindset issue, I think, is a lot of people look at pain as a problem. Right. And why is this happening to me? And the tools they use as soon as they get into pain is... 
I'm going to drink it away. I'm mm-hmm. going to numb it away. Yeah. I'm going to ignore it away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to bulldoze my way through it. Mm. I know quite a few people like that. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> but instead of looking at pain, I'd really like you to hear this. Pain is not part of the problem. It's part of your past. Right. It's going to happen. It's part of life's ups and downs. And happiness is always more fun. We all know that. But in happiness, then we just get caught up in that instead of the, with pain, we get super present. Mm. That's a gift pain gives us because people have problems staying in the present moment. But aren't we equally present when we're in a happy state? Like we're in it. Like we're, we're totally into being, you know, okay and balanced and happy, you know, so. Depends on what happy you're talking about. Because I would say the happy of like. You're having really good sex. Mm-hmm. That happy? You're no. you're present and you're in it. That, that would be a good happy. Happy of like you're at this most epic concert in the whole world and it's awesome and it's your jam and you're listening to your favorite song with 100,000 other people. Right. The energy is high. You're present. You're in it. That's awesome. The regular day-to-day, like I have a happy life. Mm. A more comfort zone happiness. Okay. I don't think we're really present. I think a lot of times we're just taking a You're loop. on autopilot. We're on of? autopilot, and I think we're taking a lot of it for granted. We I take see. for granted that we have water. We have take for granted we have a roof over our heads. Right, and a right. lot of people don't have that. Right. So I think happiness is relative. Extreme happiness, yes, I think we stay fully present. Mm. I think pain, we try to do what we do with the with the day to day happiness. We just numb it and dull it out yeah it just becomes either this background or, thing i'm having a good day i'm having a bad day yeah either that or you try to like f- fix it and change it really really quickly oh, which yeah. which which really gets you into that present moment too just in a very sporadic or erratic kind of energy when you're the, like like really going through the motion and you're like i need this to change i need this to keep on moving instead of like you know stepping back like we always tell you guys stepping back and just taking a breath And I mean, I can't express enough how getting curious changes the game. Completely. You know, when shit's going down, if you simply step back and get curious, I mean, I'll use football. When you step back and you get curious, you're in the end zone. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're right there. You're like, you're ready to catch the ball. And it doesn't matter who's around you. You're going to catch that ball. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah, so I think if you, like, step out of the pain for a second, because mm. I think we're trying to numb it out because we don't like it. Okay. And we're not honoring it, and mm-hmm. we're not seeing the purpose in it. Mm-hmm. So I don't think we're, yeah, we're to step out of it and actually get curious and, like, why am I having this pain? Is there something in there for me? Is there a lesson I'm supposed to be learning? Am I doing it to support somebody I love? You know, because I had to go through a big court case with a family member and it was painful and it was awful Mm -hmm. and I did not like it. But to support that family member, I mean, again, love is worth going through that pain. So I just stayed really focused on why I was doing it Mm -hmm. and that I needed to show up the best that I can and be the best me, even in the midst of all that hardship Mm -hmm. and do what I could because pain is worth it. Pain is the purpose at the end of it and through it all that helped me ride through it. One thing where you were just saying about trying to bulldoze through it or you're trying to do it, do something to the pain to change it immediately. Right. We have a business. It's a medical billing business. And I've been working at 50, 60 hours hmm. ad nauseum. And this is my passion. That is not. Right. So doing that, that many hours has me in the like, oh, I have to do something to fix this. I hate this. I can't do this anymore. I don't like it. Right. And the more I pushed against that and railed against that and tried to do things to make it change, the less happened. That's true, yeah. Because I wasn't honoring what that business gives me. I wasn't sitting in deep gratitude of what the purpose of it is in my life. Mm. Not that makes it any better that I like working that many hours doing something that's not my passion. Right, right. So it's not like ignoring what is. Mm -hmm. But every time I did that and I got out of patience and I got out of curiosity, like how could this play out? Because in my head it was like, I have to sell it. I have to, you know, I had like two or three options in my head of how it was going to work to get out of that pain. And that was it. And when I step back and I get patient and I stop trying to push, because we tell you guys all the time too, you have to actively participate. Oh yeah. And then let the universe conspire on your behalf. Yeah. Well, I was just actively participating over (laughs) and over and over again, trying to force my will. Yeah. Yeah. On things and not giving that space for the universe to present 
And when I actually stepped back and gave it space, all of a sudden, the longest running employee with the company gives their notice Mm. right before a holiday. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm fucked. And it just started amping the pain and the more work I'm going to have to do and the more hours I'm going to have to put in. And so my brain mindset was, is totally going south, Mm. deep into the pain, Mm -hmm. instead of this is an opportunity. What is the purpose behind this? And then all of a sudden, a new contact I had in my email happened to mention my dilemma. And she happened to know somebody that does exactly what I do for over a decade and happened to be looking for a job and could happen to start the day after the holiday ended. Like, bam, 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 problem solved. Synchronicity is awesome. So I was like, okay. So I took several weeks and I got in alignment Mm -hmm. with myself, with my energy, with what I was saying I wanted. And then it just all happened real Mm. super easy. So patience is a big one. Holding space for yourself. Mm, Yeah, yeah. And allowing that space for, A, for you to crack open from your pain. Because pain usually is there. To help open something up to make more space and more energy to bring something else out. To bring more love out, more light out, more something. That's true, yeah. So holding space for yourself. So I sat in that pain of, yeah, this isn't my purpose. Which then grounds me really deep into, I know know what is my purpose. Because this is showing me what isn't. Mm -hmm. I like this. It's okay sometimes. But it's not my gig. So do you think that pain, does pain always have a purpose? You know, like when it comes to pain, I'm kind of in a in that gray area with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure why I've been trying to lean into it to try to figure that out. Lord knows I've been through enough pain in my life. So I know what pain is, but I still find myself being in the gray area when you're talking about it having a purpose or you know what I'm saying? Right. Because it's not always going to be a reward like the baby at the end, or Mm -hmm. I get less hours that I have to work in the business that I'm not thrilled with. Mm -hmm. It can be more ambiguous things. And I think that we miss out on these things. Like pain can teach you endurance. Pain can teach you how strong you are. Pain can teach you how to persevere. Mm. Pain can teach you how when you're down and you're low, how do you get yourself high again? How do you get yourself back up? Mm -hmm. Because if you know how to climb your ladder, how to shift your energy, how to change where you're vibrating into a space where you want, Mm -hmm. that's a tool that's a gift for anything forever. Because you could be in a really like, I love this. How do I get more of it? Wait, Mm -hmm. I know how to get higher. Mm -hmm. So we often learn from those pain places how to quickly elevate ourselves. Right. Or how do we deal with that? Because it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So we can make it easier on ourselves. Now, when you get into the elevated space to change, is that where the purpose comes into play where it becomes clearer or, you know, or is that you kind of trying to move past the pain? No, I think it gets you clear on who you are and what you're made of. Mm. So that pain more becomes of, okay, that's a piece of me. I experienced this. I made it through that and I learned this, this, and this about myself. Right. So I'm more solid. I'm feeling more of a a whole person. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm feeling more in my power. I'm feeling more um, anything can come at me and I can handle it. And this is usually like when pain, regardless of what kind of pain, if you get to that point where you're just kind of stepping back and getting curious and, and trying to figure out at that moment, why is this happening? Is that those are the kind of questions you want to be asking yourself? I know because when mm. when I'm in pain or some sort of discomfort, I feel like, like I said earlier, if if I get into that very curious space, I find myself looking outside of what's bothering me. And I also find it that I can see better. You know what I'm saying? Like I might not be able to see it if I'm deep in the trenches of the pain, you know, but when I take that step back and I get curious as to, you know, why did this happen? How did I manifest this? What's the lesson here? You know, I start to ask myself those questions. Now, not immediately because, you know, I'm human. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and when pain comes, I'm like, what the fuck? Exactly. You know, I get into that vibration first. Why me? Why is this you, happening to you, me? You know, I get into that frustrated, like, why are we here? But then that's my, like, my trigger to say, okay, I need to step back and get curious. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to pain, for me... I think that it falls into that really gray area that I so despise in my world. (laughs) (laughs) 
I like either being black or white. Well, that's know? not this world. And I know that. <laughs> and I know that I set myself up all the time because yep. of that. Because I always think that's either this or that. Yep. You know, that gray area is uncomfortable to me. And I've often asked myself why. Right. You know. And that's why people often categorize pain as negative. Because right. we think of black and white. It's good or bad. No. Happiness is good and pain is bad. Mm -hmm. But happiness, a lot of times, is where you don't grow. And pain is one of your number one growth spurts. Mm -hmm. And we all crave this growth and this change so yeah. it's funny how we rail against pain when it's the thing that can give us what we want the quickest sometimes mm. yeah it's true it's true but i also think with pain like what you said with the external and internal their initial questions are good why is it happening because maybe there could just be a, a simple thing right like the court case it was people's actions i knew exactly why it was happening it was crappy there was nothing i could do about it but show up and participate mm -hmm. so that wasn't something externally i could fix right but you know i learned about myself how well i could show up in different spaces that i had never shown up in before mm -hmm. and that was it was really yeah because it really wasn't like your pain per se you know what i'm saying Cause it was it, a painful it experience was a, it was a painful experience but it wasn't your pain you were kind of you know holding space and being supportive and doing the, those things. But I things. felt pain inside. I, I totally. Not just totally. for the loved ones, but for myself because I was stressed. Yeah. I remember seeing that in you. And I remember seeing that in all the other parties involved too. Being a major witness in a big case is, yeah. is, is very stressful. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when it, the other attorney's coming at you with yeah. trying to twist your everything, your integrity and your words. Exactly. And and when it's happening to someone that you love and care about too. You know, that's the other. That's right. the other part of it. You know, it was interesting playing witness to that, too, you know, because seeing how pain was, like, woven in so many different things, be it the other party, pain being involved there, the person that you're supporting, their pain, your pain. And it's just, it became an interesting... Uh, it's like a tapestry of all yeah, woven, it was, it was of love and pain. It was very, really interesting yeah. to watch it in play. But I also got to see that you guys all just kind of, in your own way, stepped back and mm -hmm. just supported each other, which was good. Yeah. I want to give you a quick message before we get back to this episode. You can get free soul notes delivered directly to your inbox just by going to soulintentions.org forward slash soul notes. Many of you have forgotten how to listen to your soul, and those of you that are tuned in have a bad habit of ignoring the soul's urgings. Or maybe you just need a little reassurance that your soul is truly talking to you. You can get soul notes directly in your email, filled with reminders, gentle nudges, and sometimes a kick in the ass, all with love from your soul. Just go to soulintentions.org forward slash soul notes. So if it's something you can externally fix, then obviously have an external goal to fix that and do mm -hmm. what you need to do. But a lot of the times it's an internal thing. And I, I don't think people set internal goals a lot. Right. Like with my business, I wanted to take it to a place where it gets, you know, to a certain point where I can sell it or a certain place where I can step back from it. Like I have external goals with that company. Right. And it wasn't happening. I felt stuck mm. for a long time. And I, I was railing against it, railing against it. And I have all these plans and everything's mapped out and it's not working. When I turned it into an internal goal of upping my vibration and making sure my mindset matches what my goals were, mm. it just happened in a matter right. of weeks right? with great ease. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of times we miss out on setting internal goals. We have been taught all the time to say, I'm going to get the job. I'm going to buy the house. I'm going to pay off the bills. Mm -hmm. External goals are everything we've always been taught. Right. Never the inside Never stuff. Never your inside stuff. And that's where the trick is. Yeah. Or that's, that's how it works. Yeah. And this is why we emphasize the knowing yourself. You know, this is one of the reasons why we have that group, the Know For Yourself group, because it really comes down to you getting to know the intricate details of yourself, mm. really getting to know what makes you tick, exactly, what creates the pain, what creates the happiness, and so on. And you can only do that if you take space to really get to know that for mm -hmm. yourself. The example I'm looking for, you know, obviously it's mine because it's my experience and it's just simply like I've said before, just stepping back because you really, really need to get curious about yourself. 
because the things outside of you, they're going to happen right. regardless. And you have no control. That's mm-hmm. the bottom line. But you can certainly control anything you want within yourself and when you step back and you ask why am i feeling this way it gives you a chance to feel like you're back in control Mm -hmm. because then it's not the pain and it's not the emotions that are controlling you you're asking the questions you're in the driver's seat you're controlling the situation Mm -hmm. internally right because a lot of times like you said you can't control externally right um and i'm going to reference back to love again because we understand love and love is easier for us because love is pleasant yeah And why love leads to such horrid pain a lot of times internally. But I think the beauty of love is the same beauty we can find in pain. An example of this I'll give you, I don't know if any of you, if you haven't listened to it yet, listen to Justin Bieber's new song, Lonely. Hmm. What a haunting song. It's a haunting, it's two minutes. It's not your stereotypical what's on the radio right now, repeating over and over again, except for the one lonely. But... This man pours out his heart from when he was a little boy. Mm -hmm. So this is like a lesson in sometimes pain doesn't clear itself from our bodies and from our systems for Mm -hmm. many, many years. Sometimes we have to mature raising our mindset to a certain level where we can actually understand the pain that this man experienced as a young boy. It's just so much beauty in him expressing not being seen Mm -hmm. and not being seen. I mean, he was only young. And surrounded by all this chaos of his career. So he didn't have the words or the maturity to be able to express what was happening to him. But we always say to everyone, if it's mentionable, it's manageable. Mm. And as he got older and he started to be able to explain how he'd been feeling and what was happening. And if anybody has known his story at all, he got very ill. Yeah. Because pain internalized and not dealt with after a while. I mean, I know it. My autoimmune thing went out of control with my pain. Mm-hmm. It'll kill you Yeah, yeah. if you don't deal with it. So if it's mentionable, it's manageable. So find someone you trust. How he started, I mean, he's a singer, but he writes mm-hmm. and he wrote it down. And he didn't do anything with it for a long time. And then he revisited it. And when he got to that point where he could actually do something about it, he just wrote this beautiful, amazing song, Lonely. Mm. So the beauty in his pain and him sharing that journey. So out of his pain came this beautiful song, haunting song, explaining how he felt, how he discovered himself in it. Right. You know, in how he stepped back and saw his childhood. And the song is a great representation of how pain turns into purpose. Exactly. And that was the purpose that this song and those words needed to come out because there's, I'm sure, a bunch of people out there that feel exactly the same way that song is described. Yeah, listen to it. And when he gets into the lonely part, I mean, listen to it on really good headphones. Mm-hmm. It just, like, it moves something in you. Like, you, yeah. you feel when you hear this song. You can see his story. You can hear his story, and you can feel his story. In two minutes. Yeah. I mean, it was brilliantly captured his entire childhood in this piece of art. Because that's what it is. And, 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 And it's his life. And that's what knowing yourself looks like. Exactly. And it's brought healing not only to himself. And see how he started with himself. Mm -hmm. He didn't feel seen as a kid. He felt like this little pawn in the music industry. He didn't feel seen. He got older. He was able to actually see himself. He was actually able to figure out who the hell he was. Was he the little robot that they were, you know, managing around when he was a child? Or was he, he's a true artist. He's a true singer. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't a huge Biebs fan back in the day. And and now I wasn't either. And now I I am. I think it's his stuff. His work is beautiful. It's authentic. It's heartfelt. It's really gorgeous. And it's interesting because the documentary that he's been doing on his life also put into play that when this song came out, that he was able to sit with all the people that have been around him who are still around him now, the opportunity for them to hear how he felt what he was seeing and they got to talk about that wow i didn't even know that you were going through that exactly you know what i'm saying i wish i knew but it gave them the platform to have a conversation and this is again one of the other things that we talk about that it's important to have conversations absolutely it doesn't matter how hard or how easy they are you have to talk you have to get to that place in your life where it's okay to sit there 
describe what you're feeling, feel what you're feeling, and then be able to say, this is me. And then listen, listen to what the people are giving you back. Because that's why you're there, you know? I thought it was brilliantly done. Mm -hmm. It's complete artistry at at the most masterful way. I mean, and look at any, like when 9-11 happened or natural disasters happened and people as community come together, regardless of what they think or their race or their religion, people come together and they help each other because that's how we're naturally built. So through pain, a lot of times we find that love. We find that place to be seen. We find that place to show up. Like, there is so much purpose in pain that we don't even realize. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other day, like, I was so busy at work, and then something came up, and I had to go to the post office. And I was like, I heard in my head, you should go to this post office, not that one. I'm like, that one's farther away. I have time, it's crunch, and I have a lot of stuff to do. And (laughs) But I listened, and I went that way, and then I hit a traffic jam, and then I hit a car accident, going three miles. And I Mm -hmm. finally got to the place I was going, and there was a disabled gentleman sitting there, almost looking like he was going to start crying because he couldn't find a lid for his coffee cup hmm. across from the where the post office was. And so I helped him, and I helped him get out to his car and all this stuff, and I'm like, okay, maybe that's why I came here. Then I go across where I was trying to go first to the post office, mm-hmm. and there's a lady with her walker stuck in the doorway. Right. So I help her, and she's like, oh, you did your good deed for the day. And I'm like, I've actually done two in the last three minutes, but, you know, hope maybe I could go for three. And I went from that hurried, rushed, I have so much to do, I was pissy, now I have to go to the post office. I went from that crap energy to assisting two people and having really kind moments and exchanges with them where I was touched and I teared up and I got in my car and I'm like, that's all I want to be doing every day. I want to be connecting with people and helping people and touching people and loving people. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. So like me having to go to the post office created all this dynamic shift in this pain I was sitting in at work. Mm -hmm. It's really, really interesting because that, what you experience, I think gave you the opportunity to also see that your pain led you to places it helped get other that, people out of their pain needed, that needed a part of you on yeah. some level you know what i'm saying yeah specifically because you were the one that was there so because the gentleman kept all he kept doing was apologizing i'm sorry well, i'm so slow now i'm so old now i can't walk right now and it's like i'm and i looked at him and i said don't you ever say sorry you don't you ever say sorry. I said, you are perfect absolutely the way you are. And it is my pleasure to be able to help you with mm-hmm. this. And I'm honored to be able to, you know, to help you get to your car and get your coffee and, and get you on with your day. And, and it doesn't matter how fast or slow you are. You are just perfect the way you are. Like, yeah. I, I had moments with these people. Yeah, yeah. It's just what I do. It just flows out of me. I don't really mean to go and try to be <laughs> this inspirational speaker when I talk to people, but it just, it hurt me to feel his pain of him right. apologizing for being old and slow and disabled. Like, yeah. it, it like broke my heart. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We have to put that back together because you are perfect and you are whole, sir. Yeah, yeah. You are important and you made my day. Like, yeah. And I told him, I said, I was in a crappy place when I walked in here. And now I just like, I just want to hug you, but you know, COVID and all, I'm not <laughs> going to, but it, it just... Yeah, it, yeah. Pain can always be for a purpose if you just look for it. I mean, yeah. it could have just been me getting out and getting some fresh air for five minutes instead of being in the office all day. If I chose to stop and look at it that way. Right. You just never know other people's story. You don't. That's for sure. And I think that maybe sometimes these pain occurs so that we can realize that there are other people experiencing the same things or not the same kind of pain. But pain in general. Pain in general. And we all get so caught up in our own. Yeah. That we forget to look around us and see that there are other people having something going on. Yeah. Yeah. So two ways we'll get into to to wrap this up on how to move beyond your pain. One I like to call playing the what if game. And it's like stepping into the power of possibility. Like, you know, what if I went out there just to help that gentleman? What if I went out there to help myself to shift my own energy? Like, I I don't know. Mm. If I had played that what if game. Instead of, I boxed myself into my experience. I think we all commonly, we box ourselves into our experience. Uh, Instead of giving that space to be open-minded, to removing the limits around what we know so that other things can happen. Mm. And being creative. Cleaning out your emotional mental clutter in your head. Oh, yeah. Because it's getting in your way. So playing the what-if game. And the second one is 
accept that you're hurt. Because we're hearing constantly that, oh, I'm okay. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm great. Yeah. And you know they're not. Like, yeah. you can feel they're not, or you know what's going on with them. Yeah. Accept that you're hurt and be okay. Know that it's okay not to be okay. Yeah. You don't always have to be, I'm great, I'm great, because you don't want to burden anybody else. Yeah. Maybe you just don't want to talk about it, but mm-hmm. say, I'm feeling kind of crappy, but I'm not in the place to talk about it right now. But thanks for asking. But you know what? It is okay to talk about it, you know, yeah. <laughs> which leads me to something else. Just really quickly, I was having a conversation with both my sisters. Yeah. And the youngest said to the oldest, you know, I really admire that you have the ability to say when you're not okay. She goes, I've learned so much from that from you because you don't pretend when you're okay. You just, you put it out there and you say, nope, this isn't working for me. I'm in a bad space. I need some time. And where my younger sister tends to be like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know? So the fact that my older sister is kind of like modeling, modeling, yeah, modeling this for my younger sister and had a discussion and I was witness to that. I thought it was absolutely freaking brilliant. That's so cool. So I had to just share that with you guys. Yeah, definitely. So ditch the I'm okay mentality if you're not. Get real with yourself and get real with the people around you because the only way for you to be seen is you to share what's really going on with you. And the only way for you to really be heard is to share that and then let the people reflect back to you what yeah. they're you know how they can maybe support you or maybe yeah. they simply are just there to listen yeah. so you can move out of your old stories of what happened to you and be really present with this is where i'm at right now this is where i'd like to go yeah i mean bottom line we're not perfect exactly things happen and we need to capitalize on things as we experience them so pain can be an opportunity it's not part of the problem. It is nope. part of your path. Yeah. If it's mentionable, it's manageable. Please, please, please I love mention that. it. I love that. Yes. And make internal goals, not external ones. Yes. Start. You match your vibration. You match your mindset. And if you don't know, like, I didn't know how to move my business to that next level. I started putting on podcasts while I was furiously typing away at my keyboard, doing my work <laughs> like a mad scientist and a mad person on top of it, <laughs> listening to people like, this is what next level business people do. This is what, like, hearing that mindset in my head. And so that was my new tune instead of the, I hate this, I hate this all yeah. damn day long. Yeah. Do things to program that mind or surround yourself with people that know more than you. Because the more you communicate, the more they can give you information back. Right. And it helps you not avoid pain because you can't because it's always going to be there. But move through it more gracefully and find the purpose in it so that you can be stronger yeah more whole and find the beauty in it yeah like they said if you resist it will persist yeah absolutely (laughs) all right folks turn your pain into purpose yes catch you on episode five all right have a good one peace out bye